A Sunrise Sky and Aerial Proportion. If you'd like to learn more about oil painting as you create for contentment, be sure and click the subscribe button and hit the little notification bell so that you get notified every time we upload a video to help you produce oil paintings like this. What is aerial proportion and how do you create it in a painting? We're going to show you the steps we took in this painting to create the sunrise sky and use aerial perspective as we're putting it together. So we're, let's get started. I'm going to start off and take a little thinner. I'm going to grab some of the yellow. This is kind of a lemon yellow. We're going to start right here in the center of our painting. And we're just going to kind of work it across and just work it in. And it doesn't matter if the, it runs a little bit because this will all work out. Anyway, I'm just going to. We just want to get the idea of the color here on the canvas and kind of the and this will tone down as we go along as you'll see so it doesn't really and now up here we're going to take some Prussian blue and we want to we just want a thin layer of it because Prussian blue is a real strong color and it doesn't really matter which hand that you use to spread your color with just so as long as you get it up there and it's okay that there's a little bit of yellow on the brush still we don't mind that either but the one thing we do want to do as we come down we want to make sure that our color is lightening as we come down because as it gets further away and closer to the horizon that atmospheric perspective that distortion of color lightens the sky up along the ground just like it so that you'll and you'll notice it if you look out across a large area that it's darker the higher you look up and lighter the further you look down and we're not worried too much about the blue mixing with the yellow yeah it'll give you a little bit of a greening effect but that's not going to be a problem and you'll see why here as the painting goes on but we just want that light color along the base of the painting and skyline here and as we work our way up it gets a little darker now I like the shade of the Prussian blue it gives it a different vibrant hue than an ultramarine or a thalo because it's a richer blue and when you're depending on what you're doing you're going to change your colors according to what effect you want this particular painting I want the effect of the darker blue in the sky because of what we're going to be doing when we get to showing you how to do some clouds There's enough color here to just bring it down you're just kind of scumbling it in scruffing it in however you want to call it right now work that lighter color across where we're thinning it out just bring that and you can probably hear the brush scuffing on the canvas and that's normal in time what you'll notice is that your brushes will wear because of the constant friction with that and we're kind of lighter in the center darker along these corners and this is going to take a little while to get the effect you want that's normal so don't worry about that but be sure you keep going in and ever so often thinning your blue out along the skyline here and the horizon line so you want to work that atmospheric distortion 
or perspective as they call it, further into your artwork as you go along. Just slowly work that darker color up out of your project. And if you notice by doing it this way, it also gives your sky an atmosphere type feel to it, like there's movement in the, your sky. And that's what you want, is you want that your sky to be alive. You don't want just a flat, dead sky if you can help it. You get pretty good exercise this way too. Especially on a larger painting like this, it takes more. And I'm actually making this painting for a competition I've been asked to enter. And I have to have, I'll be submitting this one, this one, and I have to make one more between now and the 1st of February, ready to go to a museum for their preliminary. And then if I get accepted into the that part of it, if I pass that, then I'll have to do three within the next year of the same size for the uh, actual art um, competition that the museum holds every year. On this particular painting, this canvas has a bar in the back, so you gotta watch it in the center. So I'm just lightly pushing on the back of the canvas when I'm going over that area where that bar is. When you're using a thinner, that's one thing you got to be careful of is getting too much on your brush. And then onto the canvas. As you can see, it's making my pigment run here a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go pick some of it up. Get some more of the paint. And we'll just come right back in here with it more color and this comes with practice you just learn to work with what happens don't let it get you excited or disturbed uh, Bob Ross used to call them happy little accidents because they can give kind of some neat effects sometimes to what you're doing and in fact this is actually allowing us to make almost a cloud effect not actually painting in any clouds. There's fighting that bar again. And I'll come get some more of the paint. Add some more to that. And the nice thing about oils is that this will allow us to, to uh, we can, oils allow us to come back in and add and blend a little more later after some of this has evaporated off. As you can see, it's starting to evaporate off now. So it's starting to give that that effect I was creating earlier. Just slowly work the pigment in. And because this is such a bold color, it's all a slow process. You don't want to get too big of a hurry because you can wind up with some pretty drastic dark spots if you're not careful. A little more right through here. And I'm using just the pure pigment now. I'm not using any thinner on the brush anymore. As I'm coming in and I'm adding the where I want the effect now. And about what I'm doing, I'm just barely putting any on the edge of the brush. It's just barely on the tip. So you can see if I go on the side, it's not doing anything. But if I get out here on the tip, it drops the color for me. And I can work that color whichever direction I want it to go. Do the final blending. And I've still got a little bit of that color right on the ends of the brush there, see? Pick it up, move it where I want it. There we have a nice pleasant blue background of a sky. Not too dark, not too light, but a vibrant blue that grabs the attention without distracting. If you liked what you saw today and you want to learn more, 
Be sure and click the subscribe button down below and hit the net bell notification so that you get notified every time we upload a video or go live. And we'll see you next time as we create for contentment. In the meantime, you be sure and have fun.